What's up guys, we're back for our fourth part of the 22 Super Tuesday. This time I get it right, obviously no bounce in play. As we go deep in this one, we have 887k right now. One of the chip leaders in the tournament and not the chip leader, but like one of the biggest stacks in the tournament, not doing too bad. So let's see how this goes. A 48.5 on the button with such a tight big button, but him being so short, that's definitely fine fault. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't mind an aggressive strategy though, bar. Let's see how we do here. Um, yeah, I expect everybody to be a, play a little bit tight. Most of these guys do not run that deep usually, so it's a lot of money on the line. It's a spot. With a half pot seabed on the button, I would really, really like a raise now. Um, but if you look at the stack here, 16 bigs, so we just have to fold. Um, but if you were deeper, this is a really nice hand to be raising. We can happily stack off on like some aids, some clubs, make it fold this ace highs. And over here, checked and suited. We going on for the flat versus 3x. I'm not sure how good that is. You know, 3x obviously opens a lot on the button, so it might still be fine. But I'd rather 3 bet versus 3x or fold, honestly. Um, versus min race, I obviously would call. Um, we flop it open ended, and now look at this bet sizing. We just have to fold, and yeah, it's just not great. King Queen here. We flat again. Once again, 3 betting. These spots I like a little more, but wouldn't hate the flat. Don't hate the flat here on the button. On this flop, when it's checked around, I expect most people to do the C-better check. So I wouldn't hate to be leading and turn this hand into bluff. We also block king check, queen check. And yeah, with some good turns for us that we can barrel as well. I wouldn't hate that. But that's a good turn as well. We will certainly bet now. We go for a big sizing. Um, we want to kind of look like, look like a draw here. I don't expect anyone to have like too many checks now or like a queen. Um, so yeah, we have to get called, so it's kind of a reason to go for a smaller size to get to get more calls here. So I wouldn't hate like a 40k bet there instead. To still get some call from like an 8 for example. So we might just think we're going for a cheap bluff. I think as we go into the final table, things will also get a little more interesting. I mean, so far we played pretty obviously. And um, once again, he raises. Yeah, well, not a good spot to be 3 betting here as a percentage of the time, just folding is obviously fine. I'm gonna stay in a the line there. Let's see a flop with the king 9. Um, I think we got a call turn after they check flop. And check fold river. There we go. I just think that like, he says like all the weak ace x and he doesn't decide to bet on the flop. He has king queen, check 10. They didn't know that he didn't bet on the flop. I just really don't think people are bluffing that often here. And we can call with our ace x two pair on straights as well. Check 10 over here, just a fold. Too many big band open. Looks like we are down to the final two tables and we get the kings. No action though. It's crazy how many opens just got through here. Nice. Good defend with the 6 3 suited. Just check calling flop here. And now it get, gets kind of tough on the turn. It really depends how often he bets the turn there. We really haven't looked at this that too much. 100%. Um, one hate a call again. King Queen of Hearts and no stuff like that. Just bets again. I do the call. And the 8 is a pretty bad river. You know, we don't expect to bluff again with like 8-9, I guess he just takes the showdown value, Queen 9 got there. So I think overall we just want to be folding on this river, which we do. Also, it's really important to stay over 30 big blinds, given um, how soft the tournament is. I find to fold to min race. And yeah, we really don't want to get like into any big awkward spots. Raise it up here with the screen again. Flop then check check. I wouldn't hate a small bet here on the turn. I really don't think he would bluff you too often, but yeah, check calling is fine as well. And now we just take our showdown. And yes, queen eight. You know, gotten to bluff like a third part on river, so that's nice. I think we obviously got a call river. And C flop. Uh, C flop. <laughs> C good hand. And win. I think we're suited. I said a lot of people fought. I like the wide opens. Got a C bet here. We get clicked. And this is kind of interesting now. So we have a 7 as an out. He has four sevens in the deck and a king that's usually an out as well. So there's like seven outs. Um, obviously some of the outs might be blocked in case he has hearts. But yeah, if you have seven outs here, we need roughly we need um around like 50% equity of the turn. Maybe a little more like 70 to 80, I would say, to hit the king or a seven. And that means that we should call here, given that we only need to have 16% equity. And yeah, I think this is a call. And we make the fold. I guess because I'm pretty short and we are like in a lot of awkward spots here on the turn. I see that. And yeah, so if a 7 of a hearts and a king of hearts is not a clean out, it's not like a terrible fault here. It's kind of a close spot. I'm honestly not sure what to do here. If we had like the king of hearts, we'd rather call and stuff like that. 
So I didn't, I didn't hate the fold, but yeah, I think it's a close spot. So it's fine to stay away from here. Just ripping the S9 versus the race. I think that's fine. I don't think we can do too many champs from his side by 3 betting. So just take it down there quite often. Ace King here at this stage. I mean, we don't really know too much about him. Looks like a regular. I guess we can still raise call and limp calling here is fine as well. As I said, I, I use the raising strategy in this tournament, so I don't hate a raise with Ace King because because I would use this, I would do the same thing with like Jack Four, for example. Raising the Aces, get a flat. Uh, too bad. I mean, I think the spot hits the flat in range often enough. He also flats a lot, so we definitely want to go for three streets. With the Ace of Spades, we can also mix in some check uh, checks there sometimes. But yeah, I think call uh, just betting flop is. Fine. Check 10 now. Just gonna fold again. Sadly, he champs, he fold. King that's suited. Easy open on the button. Big blind defense. We check back the flop. I think that's fine. You know, we don't have a hard. We do not have much to go with here. And he really has a lot of like checks at 7 and 5. So I don't hate to check back. Definitely calling this lead on the turn. I go for the small race. I guess my reason is that I don't want to give him free hard river. And I still expect him to call with a check. So. Actually, it's an interesting play. I don't really hate it, but like it really, really looks strong. We don't check back that many hard draws on the flop. Maybe like an ace queen of hearts sometimes. Um, but yeah, I think it turns my hand face up and it sucks really hard if he champs himself. So I wouldn't have hated just to call him that I call him the river if the heart breaks. You know, he can have queen 10 or 8, 9. A lot of bluffs out there. So we just we just get him to fold his bluffs with that race, and I'm not the biggest fan of that. Um, I wouldn't mind a call here at all. Bring the ace nine, take it down. So yeah, I think we read I want to do splash down the river, river. Defend the queen eight. And we could have let turn there. I mean, uh, when he checks flop like this once again, he has like a lot of check eggs and we have to double barrel there. So I don't hate just giving up either. Ace to student now, once again, raising strategy, get three bet. And now we just have to fold. I guess we haven't been like, th haven't gotten three bet at all too much so far. So, yeah, 12 percent actually. Um, yeah, I could champ here like sometimes. You know, if I limped, he raised, I would have champed, but I don't really want to risk it all here with the ace to suit it. But champing there, if we see that he three bets a decent amount, is certainly fine. I'm not saying like that the raising strategy is always the best, but it's been like doing quite good so far. Uh, with the three is obviously too short to set mine too much for three bet cham. Kind of gets close actually if you expect him to open a lot. Let's see how much he opened here from the high check or like MP 15%. It's definitely not enough to make the jam. King 10 off is just a fall to that. Ace King now. Raise it up. And he jams. Easy call. And Ace Queen. Make the hold. Back over a million. And there we are. I think this is the final table. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the final table right now. Let me quickly check so we are sure about that. Alright, so this is the final table, it's confirmed guys. Let's look at the stacks here before we get a little more into it. The payouts are down here, as you see. First place getting 3.2k. Ninth place only with 280 bucks, so we definitely don't want to finish up in that place. Let's look around, we have 20 big band stack over here. 30 here, 26, 40, 44. Like a lot of pretty evenly sized mid stacks, I would say. Like me, him, 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 and him pretty much. Maybe he's a little shorter. You've only got like a short stack over here. Stacks are pretty even. And yeah, let's see. I like to fold with the deuces once again. 40 big blinds doesn't really want to open. We don't really want to open that hand. King 6 would we just fold. Ace 9 on the big blind versus... Oh, this is a sick hand, I remember. So I, I looked these guys up and I remember, remember that both of these guys were regulars. This guy opens 36% in the cutoff. And this guy also like 3 betting at this point, point I, prove, I was pretty sure. And so he fires out the 3 bet. And I'm here with the 8th blocker, I block something like pocket 9, even though that's not like huge, really important. But I still thought like even if, if I put in a 3 bet here, I can make him fold ace check, I might even make him fold ace queen. And it's just like a ton here, you know, with, IC, with ICM he doesn't really want to risk it in like a weird hand here in the first, or like in the first hand of, first couple of hands on this FT. So I threw in the light 4 bet. Haha, <laughs> the 4 bet bluff man, got the moves. Obviously I would have folded to his 4 bet champ, you know, we would have, would have gotten pretty good odds. But I just figured that this move would go through so often. If you look at it, it's not even 2x a 3 bet size. I think it looks really, really strong. And I think it's a good move. Expect to see a lot of folds. And he tanked a little bit, I remember. And then made the fold. And we took down a really nice pot. And we're off to a good start. Actually, that put us in almost a chip lead. Now we were covered with 3 players. 
So yeah, good first part, and I think that's a good play. I mean, it worked out pretty nicely as well, but yeah, you gotta you gotta look at these spots, and this is just like one of the spots where we don't expect to be called almost ever. Ace five off usually fold here. I think um, how tight everyone has been, and that we're on an FT, we can open. On the flop, I uh, like a seabed. You know, we want to protect our five for small sizing. Here's the way to go, and we got called. On the seven turn, I like a check. Um, we definitely want to be check calling. He can have like diamonds, he can have random floats, some like king queen of hearts that he bets now. Uh, maybe like even some like check 10, I'm not really sure how you lose these. He folds 23% to three bets, which is really, really low. So he certainly is a guy that likes to float, so we have an easy check call here on the turn. And now on this river, diamonds get there, king queen of hearts, queen check of hearts all get there. And we check again, and he finds a, a really small bet. So we gotta be right here 15% of the time to make this card profitable, which isn't much at all. Um, the issue I see with this is just like, besides check 10 maybe, King Queen of Hearts got there, we block something like Ace Check of Hearts, um, that he floats on the flop, we beat some other hands, but I mean especially with the diamonds getting there, and I mean I still have diamonds in my range here. You know they're bad flop and then just like check the turn. How much did he bet? I actually wouldn't call diamonds here on the turn, I don't think, out of position. But if I didn't, I mean, we have overcards as well. It's a close spot here in the river, man. Like with this sizing, we didn't have to be right almost ever. Um, It's it's really, really weird, man. Like we are getting such an insane price. I'm really not sure what the best play is. I mean, I feel like we are losing like super often here, but like, we, we, are, we are losing, if you are losing like 84% of the time, you should call here. Obviously there's ICM and like losing 210k makes a difference here for sure. But, man, it's a close one, like 15% of the time isn't much at all. He could have sound like check 10, you know. Um, I cannot really tell you guys what is correct in the spot, this is like really close. I mean, he could run all his hands in the calculator. But yeah, he seems a lot fishy as well, so it's tough to say. Um, I would tend for a fold, but yeah, we make the call here. A7 off, as I said, floats really wide, also bad flat pre. And yeah, sick value bet on the river there. Don't really like it, but okay. I mean, if you very bad that, you might have like king five suitor as well. So I guess a call is fine in this spot. I mean, oh, let's quickly watch this bust out hand. See, he gets caught by queens and loses. I see him off, he fold now. Now we are one of the shortest stacks, 22 bigs, have to make a comeback here. Definitely calling a queen 10. Breaking the flop and we do have to fold. Kings now. And he opens. I mean, really nice scenario for us to just jam it. Obviously 20 bigs, no other play. He went a long time into the tank. And here's a sense unit here, so let's see if he made a bad play calling. He needs to have 34% equity versus my range. I think my range is really, really strong in this place, in this spot. I don't expect him to be opening wide to begin with. And yeah, I mean, with with Kings, uh, Ace 10 versus Kings, for example, he has the right equity to make the call, I think. So it's close. He has a lot of chips. He goes for it. I think that is fine. Um, yeah, make the hold though. Double with the Kings. Back to 40 big blinds. And let's look back into this, as we are able to play a couple more hands now, king 10 off, I just fold. Mm. Once again on this table, I think it's fine to open this, 40 big brands deep, we are 7 handed, um, yeah, should be fine. Especially with my 40 big brands stack now. Check for suited, just fold, like 74, check and suited, we might open, yep. And the big brand champs, 18 bigs, easy fold. Um, yeah, 20 big runs deep, we don't really need to defend that. I mean, I guess I watched it every hand, maybe I do like funky three, but at one point that I cannot remember. Open the screen here, get two cards. On this flop, um, it's close between C-betting or checking. I think C-betting is better, like 6-7 is pretty connected, and we can certainly get like a lot of cards. So I like a small C-bet sizing, we go for that, 108k into 300k, I like that. But we just see two folds, and that's unfortunate. 
Okay, let's keep on going up. We only have 30 bigs. And now we get the ace king. Go for the three bet. Sizing so this is three X, I think that's fine off position. Pretty standard. Just get it through. If it off, we fold. I will look at every hand until I make the fold, just to be sure. Ace for student now 30 bigs, I made the fold. Um, I guess we have a 5-4 big brand stack here, we have 14 bigs here. And even though I usually open here, I guess I guessed, I uh, thought at the time that these guys abused me too hard. I'm not really sure, like with the replayer, it's tough to keep, like focus on table dynamics. Um, but yeah, I think this is a fold that is okay on the final table in like a tournament like this. We have a jam and a call and this guy doubles actually. Oh. Seven speed to king nine and we are down to six. I mean if someone is all in, I might as well look over the hand. Queen check off, I just fold. Once again, I think that's fine given how short this guy is. Um, he doesn't seem like he has been like uh, really, really crazy here. Looked like some solid stats, so I don't hate the fold at all. Check it here. But yeah, we could have fled it as well there. It's just like we don't really want to get into these scenarios where the other guys are too sh or like well this guy is so short. I figured we we're just like waiting for some profitable spots to take him. King four. This should be a defend no matter what. 22 big bands deep. Asus. Oh the trap. The trap. Um, I think this is a fine call. We have this guy who seems a little aggressive and we have this guy who has 13 bigs who could reach him. Also, I think this guy has a decent stack and even doesn't look like the loser's opponent once again, but certainly can do something. So I don't hate a flat here with aces. Small blank calls as well. Flop is pretty connected. We will certainly bet out here. Half pot, I like it. We get a call. And now we have a pot size bet left on the turn and he overcalled from the small blank. He has a lot of checks in his X. In this range, like queen check, king check, ace check, even though we blocked that, check nine, check ten suited, maybe even like pocket nine. So I just decided to go with the jam. Maybe it looks like king queen or spades here, something like that. And yeah, I did that. He went into the long tank, I remember, and made the call with check eight. I'm not sure. I I think that I do not like jam all my spades there, to be honest. So I rather see him fold there. But cannot really fault him too much for that call. Um, now we open the ace for student that we have a lot more chips and it gets squeezed on and I think we just got a fold here. And this guy, oh that's a big pot. Um, queen 7, oh we go for 3 but I like it. We now have more chips, you know we can apply some pressure on him but he is short, he is short. So when he 3 x it, we have, or 2 and a half x it, we have a hand that doesn't really do as that good when we flat it. You know like something like queen 9 or rather flat here. So with the queen power block, block I, I really like the 3 bet in this spot. Could have gone for another one here with the king eight suited if you think he's opening wide. And I mean, look at these hands, man. He's just opening. He's pretty relentless. Ten eight suited, definitely an open. I guess I folded at the time because he did 11 big blends, but I do not. And he has 13, 13 bigs. Okay, these guys are short, but still, I don't expect him to jam, reach him really, really wide. Both of, the, both of them seemed like fairly recreational, so I think we can get away with opening this hand. Now we got kings. Once again, open. Pretty nice spot here. And even though this guy seems like a little bit like a calling station, I do think that we just want to jam here. Um, if you had like 40 bigs, you might make a call here and try to get some more calls from like his queen check units. So I just jammed and he actually ended up calling us with pocket eights. This was quite interesting if you think about it because, I mean obviously you hold and that's like, by the way, sick hold, let's look at this first. He has pocket three, spink, spikes the three and we hit the ace to not only win the side pot and not only win this main pot, but also the side pot. Uh, since we have a better board now than his aces with two threes that count. Um, but yeah, what I wanted to show here is that when he champs like nine bigs, I'm probably re champing like most of my champing range, you know. And for him, it's not too likely that he that he um, lose like a big one. So if he expects us to open like any pair here and we iso any pair, which I do, he makes like quite a profitable call with pocket eights. It's a close body again here and. On a fine table, you can just fine table, you can just skip it with him being so short. But yeah, I I do not hate it actually that much. And we just took it down, and that was a really, really nice spot for us, putting us into a really nice position. You know, being able to abuse him for his like wide button opens now, even 10-7 off. 
really start abusing it. Usually we don't want to have 10-7 off in our three betting range, but I don't know at this point, uh, not I don't know. At this point, I'm sure that we can just abuse people. And yeah, you see that, you know, we open the queen just off on the button and that will certainly be good in the spot. Small c bet taking it down. Queen at suit we open. Sketch hand 9 bigs. We have to have around 35% equity, which we might have. Like, this is a close one, I guess. Um, I don't hate just the fold. Uh, really unnecessary spot for us. It's not bad if he, the shot stick is around. We can abuse him way more because of that. Yeah, Queen is too I could have formed again. This guy just own champ 35 picks. I guess he double versus him and now. Oh, he champed 18. Okay, that's fine. Check 6 off. We take down. Ace check. We raise. R easy. Uh, 16 picks. Can I read 3 bet here with the A7? We could sham. Queens, big man defense. Flood looks good. I like a check back. Go for a small one here on the turn. Could go a little small on that. Take it down. Um. This is a spot where we 3 bit 4 is off, and I like it. It's really, really wide, but what we gotta realize is that this guy is 12 bigs, this guy is 20 bigs. He doesn't wanna pay any parts with us. So I think this is a good 3 bet. Um, obviously, really abusive, it really depends if he is folding a lot, but he did, and I like it. You know, re really put in the aggression, abuse ICM, raise a lot, and try our position. Once again, I would have opened the 10 5 now, looking back at this. Really like a wide opening strategy. Look how much these guys are falling now. I really established my image as a table boss, you know. Being Lewis, showing the willingness to be bluffing. Um, I'm not really sure about the sizing. I rather like bet, just bet one third part and get him to fold like some of his hands. Okay, okay. We go for a wide bluff. I guess that's my idea here. I think that's fine. You know, we want to wrap something like ace check in this stage. That was my thinking, I guess. Um, but still, I think we should go like 180k here on the flop rider. And then fire another big one here on the turn. I like the big bet on the turn though. We make him fold all his queen x, all his check x. And I think he will even fold, he might fold some weak ace axes, given that he is so short. So with the with the tables, uh, the stacks being as they are, I think this is actually a good bluff. Um, and we have a champ and a call. Ace 3 through the doubles versus king jack. I mean, we're obviously happy again uh, versus, for that. Easy call with the ace 9. Bink, there's the 9, actually we had the best hand prior to that as well. And yeah, suddenly we are down to 3 handed. With 100 big blinds and 2 shorties on our table, we are in prime position to win this tournament guys. The last couple of hands will be in the final part of this series, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did so, don't forget to like it, hit the subscribe button, don't miss out on the last video, and see how it goes. Thanks for hanging out guys, good luck at the tables.